Someone recently asked me how to modify an existing file that you might find on Thingiverse or buy from an online repository um, to use with your K40. So I'm going to show you how I modified this existing design, um, a B puzzle that came off the of Thingiverse um, for use with the K40 Inkscape extension that I wrote. So the first thing we're going to do is open that file from it that I downloaded from Tangiverse is an Adobe Illustrator file, so it's gonna come up with this uh, uh, dialogue on um, how, to, how to import it. And I'm just gonna leave those kind of the defaults there. <clears throat> Bring it back over into the view here. And so now what we can see is that there's, it is color coded, which is which is what laser the, my uh, laser draw extension uses, but the color coding is not the way um, my extension expects it to be. This, in this case, red is what we would want to be engraved. The the numbers that help you assemble the puzzle, and the and black is where you want to cut. We're going to want to change that um, to red is where you cut, and blue is where you engrave. And to do that, we're going to we're going to swap colors in Inkscape. Um, so I guess we can take care of that first. So if we go to uh, the extensions and go into color we're going to do replace color so that's going to give you the option to replace the color it's going to use hexadecimal numbers so let's close that before we go too far here we're going to want to um, be able to select these different regions in here so I'm going to select here and I'm going to do edit or actually we're going to ungroup control shift G or just keep ungrouping here. So I, usually I like to get everything ungrouped completely. So now we got lots of little pieces. So what that's going to allow us to do is grab, oh, we're still not completely ungrouped. I'm going to ungroup. Okay, so now I can grab just the letters or just one shape. And I'm going to go in here and look at the object stroke fill and stroke and that's where we're going to be able to see the color that 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 is and I'm assuming this is a pure red but it's not see that this this red is actually um, 230 red 0 green and 18 blue so that's that's not what we're going to want but but we can what we can get from this screen is the hexadecimal value that that is down here in the corner so I'm going to select that and copy it the hexadecimal value there and then we can go now now we can go in and change our color using the extension the color replace color so I copied that color so I'm going to replace that color I'm going to paste and you see the the two F's at the end of that didn't come in because this doesn't handle replacing the the alpha channel the last two letters but that's that's okay <clears throat> and for the, the color we're going to want to go, we're, we're now changing these red numbers, we want them to be blue. So in these hexadecimal numbers, the first two zeros are red. The second two letters or numbers are green, green, and then the last two numbers are B. And you can see that over here where it says R, G, G, B, B. So we want the blue to be pure blue, which is F, F. That's going to be a hexadecimal 255 um, and just as we can do a live preview to see what that's going to do to the to the image see it's going to change those red looking colors the red looking numbers to pure blue so we're going to apply that we'll do the same thing for the what looks like black lines when we actually select it well I guess it looks like I think that was already done um, so we're going to do the same thing there. So I'm going to, uh, let's see, why is it not letting me, okay, so what's happening here, I think is this isn't totally ungrouped. Okay, so it wasn't ungrouped. So you have to make sure it's ungrouped all the way. So it actually, what looks like black isn't really black. It's almost black, but not quite. So I'm going to, again, select that uh, hexadecimal value here go into the extensions for color replace color 
paste that there and this time instead of being blue we want it to be red because we want to cut those black lines so pure red is ff in the red or the rr spaces here and hopefully all these lines are the same color but it looks like we may oh it may have only done uh the ones i had selected let's So I believe I had that selected when I hit the extension color, replace color. So let's try again without anything selected. So without without that selected, now it's going to do everything. So I didn't even have to change the numbers. It just brought in what I had before. So we're going to apply that. And hit close. That actually goes pretty quick. So and as you can see, those the good thing is all those colors were very consistent. So now we have it set up. So this is going to be... Um, all cut out. Now here's a little bit of a problem. It looks like these guys, we're going to ungroup this, and these were actually true black, so that actually um, caused us a little bit of problem. These didn't convert by themselves, but because there's only two of them, I can just select those and move this slider over to pure red. So now it's 255. And you can see down here the FF 0000 FF. And the last two FFs again is the alpha channel. So I, so you can do it either way. You, the, doing the uh, doing the conversion um, using the uh, color extension for swap colors is much more efficient. So I'm going to save this as b.svg just so I don't lose my work here anytime soon. <clears throat> so our next step in this process is to scale this project so that the that the thickness <clears throat> of our material matches the slots we have for the material to slide into. So this is a slot where there's going to be some material sliding into. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a line. I'm going to zoom in on this real close and click Right in the middle, so try to get right in the middle because you're going for the center center line of the uh, of the lines here. And then, so now I, I clicked once with the left mouse button. Now I'm going to hold down the control key, and now it's going to kind of control it and make it go straight sideways. So I'm making a horizontal line. I'm going to left click the second point right there. So now what that does, that gives me a that gives me one line that's from the center of this line to the center of this line and I can go up here and look at how <clears throat> long that that line is so it's it's a height of 0.1 0 0.01 inches and that's that's actually based on the thickness of the line if you look over here it's <clears throat> that's the that's the line width so the not there the stroke width not to be confused with the width of the line which is um, 0.12 inches, so it's almost an eighth of an inch. This is probably designed for three millimeter, which I think it, I remember reading in the uh, <clears throat> in the description for the for the B on on the Thingiverse page. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to change this 0.12 to whatever our material thickness is. So I have some really thick cardboard that I'm going to use to make this B, and it's uh, a quarter inch thick, roughly. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a little bit of a little bit of math and figure out what we need to scale this whole project to. So I'm going to keep this line because I know now I know this line is is represents the width of um, of the uh, of the of the or the thickness of the material we're going to use. So I'm going to leave this line here and I'll I'll actually probably leave this line and even engrave the line just so I have it there. Um, if I ever want to use this project or this design for anything else. So I'm going to select everything and I'm going to do either control G or object group. So that's going to group that whole object together. So now the important thing here is we're going to look at the either the overall width or overall height and we're going to, and we're going to lock it so that, that we can't uh, change the height or the width without it changing the other. Um, usually um, you get a little bit of finer control if you use the bigger number. So I'm gonna I'm gonna use the 8.235 for the height. 
And if we remember that number, 8.235. The other thing we want to remember was our the width of our individual line was 0 0.120. And I'm going to try to make that 0 0.120 go to 0 0.25. Okay, now to convert from our old scale to our new scale, we're going to want to go from... So our current scale is... We have 8.235 inches and that's per or that's over 1.20 inches and we're going to set that equal to our new height divided by our new thickness and our new thickness is 0 0.250 inches so to solve this equation we're just going to multiply each side by 0.25 so that takes off this one here and we have to multiply by 0.25 on this side. And then we can basically just multiply the 0.25 times the 8.235 divided by 0.120. And our new number is 17.156 is our new height. So what we want to do is go back into Inkscape and change our height from 8.235 to 17.156. My height is still 8.235. Um, I have the width locked. So I'm going to change this to the number we calculated, which is 17.156. Hit enter. And everything's going to scale way up. So, okay, so now we have, it's bigger than our page, but that's okay. So I'm going to come back in here, and I want to just select that one piece again, and now look up here, my new width is 0 0.250. So now, I'm just going to drag this back over to show that it, so now the width that the that the that this design that I just scaled is now designed to work with material that's 0.25 inches, so a quarter of an inch, which is going to work from our quarter inch cardboard. So now the next problem we're going to have to deal with is the fact that some of these items are going to be too large to print um, on my K40. So what we can do is start grabbing pieces and grouping them together. So I'm going to and I'm going to cheat a little bit. Well, I'm not going to cheat, but I'm going to, instead of using, I'm, instead of going to the object menu, I'm going to start using the control G um, to group these objects together because it makes things go a lot faster. So now, okay, so now I group those together, but I actually grabbed this six down here. So I'm going to do a control Z to get back to where it was. Control Z again. Um, so now I'm going to try to grab that group again. And do the group. Now I don't have the, the six in there. So now, and, I, and what I can do now is I can verify up here when um, when the things are small enough to, enough to fit on my K40. And I can go, the way I have it set up right now, I can, the maximum, the smaller dimension is about seven inches. Um, I can go up to 12. So this is gonna be one piece that I can do on my K40 all at one time. Uh, this will be another one. Uh, let's see here. These two are grouped together really nicely down here. So I'm doing control G's again just to remind you what I'm doing. Um, and let's see how big this is. So that's... Okay, so that's a little bit too big because I'm, I'm limiting myself to... Do control shift Z to... Or control shift G to ungroup that. So I'm going to come in here and grab one of these pieces group that together move it down here so I'm gonna so I can sneak a couple of these and nest them in with this guy down here so I can also select individually instead of doing the box select 
grab. So I'm doing holding on the shift key and grabbing things so I can move them. So here we go. Now let's see what we got. I wasn't too far away before. So that's still small enough. And how about this guy here? So he's 8 by 6.7. So okay, so now I'm okay. So I have... Now I have these th three grouped objects that are going to be small enough to 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 do on the uh, K40. So I'm going to I'm going to turn these guys sideways. Whoops. Ah. So they're a little bit easier to select because that's the orientation that my short length is vertical so okay so I can either break this up into separate files or I can make different layers um, I'm not really sure which way the best way to go is but I think just it's a, it's it's a little bit quicker to do new files so I'm gonna do we're just gonna create a new file Control X on that guy. Control V. So that just made a new file with that in there. And then if you watch my previous video, um, we want to whoops resize to fit content. So now that's actually a file that's ready to go to the K40. So I'm going to save this as. B1. Okay, so that so now we have the files all set up for um, laser cutting, and what's red is going to be uh, cut, and what's blue is going to be vector engraved.